Can Christians live together before marriage? That is the question. Can they? Yes. Should they? No. It's a terrible idea with potentially life-changing consequences. I'm going to come out heavy and hard on that. This topic has been front and center with me for decades as I've navigated through several hundred premarital couples and listened to their stories. Culture has created a normalcy to it. It has now become an accepted step between dating and marriage. In 2019, Pew Research reported that a majority of evangelicals said cohabitation is acceptable if a couple plans to marry. Barna says 65%. Views on living together before marriage becomes noticeably less Christian among young, younger respondents. It feels like everything we watch as media consumers says that it is a reality. It has no downside, and why wouldn't you do it? So is it just an old-fashioned idea, and we're just not keeping pace with society? I say an emphatic no. Scripture does not give us explicit admonition or instruction regarding this type of arrangement. Thus, it has become kind of an open-handed, trust-your-instincts kind of decision for many. If, if it feels good and culture gives you the go-ahead and increasing approval from, a, from parents, relatives, and friends, then why not? It is a safe bet that whatever culture condones and promotes will run contrary to the Word of God. Seek the truth of His Word, not the whims of society. God's truth has stood the test of time. Culture seems to shift daily. With cohabitation, the assumption is that there is a sexual component to the relationship. If that is not present, there might be a different set of problems that is for another day. Scripture does not whisper on this subject. In fact, it is crystal clear. Sex is exclusively for married people as a God-honoring act of deep commitment, vulnerability, and love towards each other for a lifetime. Hebrews 13.4 instructs us, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. And Ephesians 5.3 says, Sexual immorality and all impurity and covetousness covetousness must not be even named among you. If the biblical, biblical truths are not enough, there are now decades worth of data to show that statistically it is a bad idea and not beneficial to the participants. The results show higher rates of abuse, instability for children, and emotional trauma. Studies have also shown that the vast majority of reported domestic assaults actually take place between boyfriends and girlfriends. I will bottom line it for you. Based on my experiences with relationships over the years, I have never talked to a couple that said to me, we are glad to have lived together before marriage. Never. There has been predominantly a deep sense of shame and disappointment in themselves for not practicing self-control and for dishonoring God and His plan for godly relationships. We serve a grace-filled and forgiving Savior, and He will honor our repentance. The rationale is often convenience financial benefits, and sadly, it has been used to keep a relationship going for fear of loss. One report says the number one reason was not to test compatibility. It was to increase the amount of time spent together. That was a new one for me. It seems logical at some level, but it feels like it diminishes the importance and magnitude of a marriage covenant. A marriage relationship screams commitment, deference, care, selflessness, respect, and longevity. A God-honoring marriage says forever. It does not say I will leave you when I'm not happy or I will stay as long as you meet my needs. It is not a test. It is a covenant that is designed to be unbreakable, life-giving, and deeply satisfying. Trying a potential spouse out for a period of time is disrespectful, conditional, and insecure. You can take a new car out for a spin, but it's designed to depreciate the minute you drive it off the lot. Marriage in contrast, grows in value and deepens as it ages. The return on investment is immense and generational. It is God's great design and is to be taken seriously. It is not simply sharing two keys. It is the binding together of two hearts and two minds, two bodies and two spirits to serve each other and the living God. Yes, you must seek wisdom about what you are entering. Find trusted and experienced counsel. Be patient, have a clear head, and ask all the questions. Do this with an eye on the future, not only yours, but your children and your children's children. 
Approach your wedding day with fear and trembling. You are not buying an appliance. This is a living, breathing child of God who deserves your best, your whole heart. It is not a relationship with a back door. The world doesn't does see it that way. We as followers of Christ do not. Until that person is your actual spouse, you are consorting with somebody else's husband or wife. They are not yours to try out, to put on trial, to casually engage with no end game. Honor your God, bring glory to Him, and love as He, as he has loved you, unrestrained, intentional, and forever.